Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Superwoman on our new digital TV channel F15. My name is Heidi Eichinger from the German language edition of Forbes. And every Wednesday and Thursday on this broadcast, I'm talking to experienced leaders, founders, and executives who share lessons learned to increase diversity in their companies in order to be more productive, more efficient, and hopefully happy. Today, it's my great, great pleasure to introduce you to the very talented and successful singer-songwriter, Rebecca Bakken. Welcome, Rebecca. Thank you very much. <laughs> After having interviewed a lot of top managers, executives, and entrepreneurs across all industries, I feel very honored to talk to an artist to get more insights about on the music industry and how to make a living out of art. And it's actually my first time I interview a musician, so I'm quite a little bit nervous. But thank you very much, Rebecca, for taking the time and joining us on our broadcast. My pleasure. <laughs> um, let's learn more a little bit about you. Like, where do you come from? What's your professional background? How did you find your way to music? Music was always a part of my life. It's been um, uh, following me from... Since I was very small, we were singing and playing music at home. Um, I never thought, I never, never occurred to me that I could use or use music as a way of living. So I studied a lot of uh, different things uh, up until I failed so much that there was only music left for me to do. Uh, so I, I stumbled into a, a life uh, where I uh, with music full time. Has there been like a certain moment where, uh, where you recognize that it's, it is music and nothing else? You know, there, is, uh, there are no such thing as nothing else. I just love to do music and uh, I, uh, this is what is, comes easiest to me. Um, and I don't like to, to work for anyone. I don't like to have any... <laughs> I, I, I like to be my own uh, leader and I like to use my creativity and I like to use my talents uh, and I feel that I can use that uh, in, in uh, music. Mm. When, um, how long did it take until you could make a living out of music and how did you live before? I mean, was it like a mixture of different jobs and music besides and then music took over? Um, Everything is relative. So, um, uh, how much money I made uh, in the beginning, it was not a, it was not a lot, but that was not uh, the driving motor of of, of, of uh, what I was doing. Um, and when I was young, I didn't need any, uh, any money. I didn't mind not having money. Uh, and um, since I, I I worked for different, uh, I worked in different jobs, and I I uh, I. Uh, found it horrifying to, to be an employee and I failed there too. I even got fired at one point. And I think that's when I, I that was very traumatic to me that I got fired. That, that's really hard to my, to my ego and also to my sense of being a nice person. Can you imagine uh, being fired? And um, so I think that's really uh, shot me, shoot me off in a much stronger position where I, okay, I have to, I have to, to do to fill my life with something meaningful because I'm failing at everything else. So I realized that I, when I was sitting by the piano composing music, uh, I felt a lot of energy, and so I followed that energy. And uh, and uh, then in the end, I, I was sitting with a record deal in my lap, and and uh, and uh, tours coming up, and uh, and uh, I said, "Whoa, mm -hmm. this is my life now. It's, I, I can live off from this now." How did it? How did you get your first record deal? I mean, is it like that? You, I, I have to ask those questions because I don't know how to do it. And uh, I mean, is it like you have to audition at several companies, or you send your demo tapes like it's it's shown in the movies, or how is it done? <laughs> I don't know either. Oh. Uh, well, it, it's it's. Um, I think that the driving. I mean, you have to. You have to love what you do, and you have to do it a lot, and you have to just try every uh, every avenue there is. Send your tapes or your 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 music around, and I did, and I, I didn't get any feedback at all. And then 
when I just continued anyway, suddenly it came to me. So um, uh, it's just that trying every every avenue and, and just continue working. And that is not difficult when you are doing what you love because you are doing it because of the results. So, and, and that's a very important prerequisite in the, in the beginning, for me at least. Mm. How was it when you got your first record deal? I mean, did you have a huge party? <laughs> no, it felt very natural. I was like, why didn't it come earlier? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, I, uh, I was young and, and, and uh, I was young and everything felt, yeah, of course, come to me. Mm. Uh, so it was a natural progression. I, I, it was not a huge surprise. Mm. So you're not a solo artist. You are also a leader of a band. How did you find your companions? Well, um, um, I have, I, I'm a solo artist and I hire people to work with me and for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had different band constellations, depending on a lot of factors. So um, I follow my, what I need and then I, I, I uh, hire the, you know, the, the, the people that I need for, to express what I want. Mm -hmm. Um, is it that you sometimes think like a, probably a CEO of a company or an entrepreneur for your own company? Is it like necessary to have like also those skills to be successful in, in music business? That's obviously quite a hard one. Yes, I, uh, I, um, I feel like I'm the CEO of my enterprise. So I, I'm a, I, um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a leader and I'm a manager. So leadership and manage, management are two different things, for sure. And um, I've always felt like I, uh, I have, I feel 100% responsible for everything that comes out and everything that happens and uh, everything that takes place in my company mm -hmm. with my product, my, my creation, my, my music. And um, I love that part because it, it, uh, I, I get a lot of energy from, from, uh, from having this overview and from learning and, and from, uh, you know, my mind is not constantly into the, the creative process. I get to do a lot of other stuff. Mm. And uh, that's something that I, I, that I like. I like to do this. Mm. Probably it's also important to reflect your music and your work with other people, with other musicians in order to, to get another creative boost probably. Because if you're only alone with yourself, then uh, <laughs> probably it turns strange at the point. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, yes or no, because when you really, I, I never worked with a lot of, I never, I never uh, had idols. I never uh, went to- really? No, and I never learned uh, to develop my creativity uh, uh, with anyone. I really went into myself. And that's where you find your awkwardness and your, your, um, uh, you know, your um, vulnerability. And that's, that's, your, that's the asset. All that stuff is, is the asset. So, you know, looking out for what you think is great, that's not interesting. I, I want to go in inside and find you know, my idiosyncrasies or, yeah, the weirdness or the, uh, the, the stuff that makes me me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I like, and when, I'm, when, I, when, I, when I've brought that into uh, existence, that's when I bring other people in to support that and uh, add their uh, artistry onto that. And then you get this conglomerate of something very exciting. That sounds good. It's all about you. It's built around you, yourself, your person, and your brand especially. Because that's another thing that I find quite interesting about your music, that I couldn't say it's either jazz or it's folk or it's like, I mean, sometimes you have very catchy tunes in it. Sometimes you have uh, like kind of, I would say, funk elements in it. Sometimes it sounds like Bertolt Brecht would read some of his texts. I mean, it's very, very unique. How would you describe your style personally? Well, I, 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 I wouldn't be able to describe my style. I, I don't want to describe my style because um, then I get this mental image of, of myself 
and that is that would be a, a limitation. I want to have full freedom to express myself in all directions with whatever means that I need. And uh, I see that in my life. I want to have everything. I want to try everything and keep the good. Mm. And that's also with music. I, I, I love uh, so many different ex ways of expression. I, I, my personality and, and life is 360 degrees. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, the meter. Uh, uh, yeah, I want to be able to to use whatever direction I want to express whatever I need. Is it, from your perspective, a little bit more difficult if you are not uh, like cannot be categorized in a certain style on the market, or it hasn't been a problem until now to me? So. <laughs> <laughs> I I I uh I think uh I I don't think I I don't um, I don't think about that except from when I'm speaking to journalists who like to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, luckily the, it's the journalists. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's your responsibility to categorize me and so it's your job. I I'll I won't you. do this. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I won't. <laughs> You 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 uh, previously said that you're a manager also for your you see yourself as a manager for your enterprise. I'm I'm sure you you do also have a management or like an agent or a booking agency. How was the situation during the 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 lockdown the last few weeks and months for you as a musician or representative of this of this sector? Uh, when it first when when it first started, I had a, a tour coming up, and I had a lot of concerts line, lined up uh, during these months uh, that we had to cancel. Um, I had packed my suitcase the night before, uh, so I was a little sad not being being able to go on tour. Uh, but I must say that my initial thought was, oh, I can really go into something now. I can really. Uh, concentrate and focus on something new and uh, I, I saw this as an opportunity for me personally and and work-wise uh, cre uh, creatively mm -hmm. and um, you know it's extraordinary what we are experiencing so it is just going to be so interesting to look back at and it's, and it's also very interesting to be in because there's nothing nothing pressing there is nothing I mean if, you know, we live in the Western world so uh, and I'm living in Norway, so I cannot really <laughs> complain or worry about my finances. There is nothing to worry about as long as you have a roof over your uh, head. And um, oh, I, 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 I realize I'm very fortunate to not have to worry about that part. Mm -hmm. So uh, then when I don't uh, worry about that part, uh, a plethora of uh, opportunities are just opening up and I, I, I uh, have found this, I still do, um, find this very, uh, the situation very fruitful for me. Mm -hmm. So it was a creative time and we can expect some work out of it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, it's, also it's also nice to just bring down, bring down and, and contemplate on what you're doing and, and redefining you know your your mission statement. What do I want? What is what is what is important to me? Is there integrity in in everything that I do? That is important to me. So uh, to finally sharp those things uh, is a good time for that. Mm. Because your last album, if I'm well informed, it's uh, from 2018. It's things you leave behind, which mm -hmm. marks a kind of. Uh, a break like in your life like a, a huge change what happened back then you i think you wrote it in a big part of it in new york yes um i had moved from um, uh, vienna and i moved to sweden and I, I went on to new york i want to go back to where i had spent a lot of my uh, my years early adulthood and uh, i realized i had changed uh, and uh, yeah, my whole view on the world had changed, and my view, especially, and also the view I had on myself, has changed. I uh, 
the, the teenage years really bothered me for a long time in my life. It was like a horrible time. And then you, when, you, when the, the, the chain of teenage days are letting go uh, or, or uh, loosening its grips, one comes to enjoy oneself more. And, uh, and uh, that's my music. I am accepting myself in a much bigger degree. And um, so I left, a lot, I left behind a lot of hemming thoughts or uh, ideas about what I should or what I shouldn't do. I felt a lot more free. Uh, and that's, uh, that's, yeah, that's, that's great to leave things behind. Mm. Uh, you, you, wrote, uh, you, you said in an interview, I think it was Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, you said, uh, I was at places where we used to like drink and smoke like crazy and the people I met back then and I met today, I meet today, they drink green tea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, they, they, like a they, sign they, of getting older. <laughs> you know, this is kind of drinking green tea and walking around in sandals. That's what people do now who are cool. And that's, oh, very, 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 untra very unsexy. I'm sorry. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's not my world of uh, excitement. Mm. And, uh, But you know, it, probably it's for security reasons. You don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't care. I, I don't need security or any reason to. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't have that propensity in my life. Hmm. Let's come back to uh, being successful in the music business. What do you? What would you? If you could name like three ingredients, what's really important to? be successful as a musician? What would it be from your perspective? And especially also in your part, in your uh, area of music you are living and working in? Uh, work, work, work a lot. Mm -hmm. And you've got to love it and don't make compromise. Good. And yeah. the one of the last, the, it's, I have another two questions. The one, the one is you have a lot of golden LPs or records uh, been awarded mm -hmm. uh, in Austria. And you have also been awarded with the Amadeus Austria Music Award uh, in 2007 for I Keep My Cool. I mean, is there any award you really would like to win? Uh, you know, if it's a good party uh, attached to the award, I'll, uh, I'm up for any award. <laughs> you're not, you're not on <laughs> for these trophies on your shelf. No, I. No, what is a trophy and what is an award? It's it's kind of a competition or comparison. And you know, Bella Bartok, uh, I think, said competitions are for horses. <laughs> Um, and yes. <laughs> we have this whiff of competition and, and comparison and and uh, and if you get an award, what does that do? And like, oh, you're great. What und and um, the the award the award for me is uh, if 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 I want to think in those terms, it's the audience. It's the, the audience members that come back or, or that, that tell me. That, that my music or my work has done something or has an effect on, on, on them. Um, so, you know, that, that's all I, that's, that's, that's what has, that's what has the most impact on me. Mm. And I, I, I love that part. So do you miss the, the live performances and being like traveling around? Yeah, I miss the audience and uh, yeah, the, the communication that I have. Uh, Uh, with, with the audience and, and the musicians, I, I miss that. Mm. But that's uh, uh, it's also time for everything. So you know, being able to go on the uh, the other way, go on, on the inside, is also extremely valuable in order to have something to present wh when you are out there uh, communicating with other people. So when we can, uh, when can we expect your next like record coming out? Uh, there is, uh, I have a Christmas record ready oh. um, this uh, this uh, this Christmas and I, I, I love Christmas music and I'm really? 
Yes, and uh, I will compete with Mariah Carey and I don't know who. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I hope it's coming out now. It's, it's already done, but um, you know, there uh, we have problems with uh, with the audience, and and uh, we don't know when we can be back on the road. And I have a lot of concerts lined up this fall, all over Europe. Uh, so, if the, everything works as it should, or as we hope, uh, the record will come out in the fall, the Christmas record. So we are very much looking forward to seeing you and your band also performing in Vienna, hopefully. And welcome yes. you back to, to your second home city. I know that you lived here for quite a while. Yes, I did. It was a wonderful years. And uh, please uh, take care. And thank you very much for being part of our Superwoman journey. I was, I, I'm really happy that, that uh, we could make it <laughs> at the end. <laughs> and uh, thank you to our viewers. If you don't want to miss any broadcast we do here on our F15 channel, please just subscribe it and uh, see you soon. Take care, Rebecca. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Bye. Bye-bye.